quality. Really dope. 2018 for me was busy. In one word, 2018 was super, 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 super busy. My name is Imran Christian. I'm an artist born and bred in Cape Town, and I'm here to tell stories. Hi, my name is Muzi, and I'm an electronic music producer and DJ from Mbanyan, Gozul Nadal. Uh, hi, my name is Maria McCloy. I am a publicist in Johannesburg in the entertainment industry, and I also am a shoe and accessory designer. My name is Lazi Grace Perisi from Lisa Matebola. I'm an illustrator, I'm a sculptor, I'm a designer. My name is Matthew Kiza. I am the creative director for Social and Orphan Street Clothing Shop. The first six, seven months of the year was purely work and very underground. So the biggest challenge there was keeping focus, strength true to the intentions and having to kind of like block out all of the noise. Some of the challenges I faced in 2018 was just, I guess, in a lot of ways, leveling up in a local market and dealing with a lot of bigger brands. Like trying to see who's like real around me. Like that was like a big challenge last year because my career like really took off. But yeah, I was still like tr just trying to be umuzi. I would say professionally, I didn't really have any lowest points this year. If anything, I just, you know, maybe I needed a body double and lots and lots of energy drinks. My challenges for 2018 were trying to find something new. Uh, that also needed something which was like a bit challenging, which was patience. Like making sculptures and patience is one those things go together and I'm not, I wasn't really the kind of, I'm not, still not, I'm still learning. Around four or five months in, like, you know, life throws all the curveballs at you and especially when you're making art, you know, often you face some heavy challenges. I also figured out a new way of being because of the economic climate, you know. You don't make things in a vacuum. When you're a designer, you see what's happening about you. Yeah, you just sort of don't want your ego to tell you that you're dope or whatever because then you start like making shit that's not Good. There were moments where it was easy, there were moments where it was hard, but I could say that for, for the most part, the year was, was a success, you know, because I came out with something that I didn't have when I started. I mean, some people say it was a tough year. I don't know, I still don't believe Trump is president of the USA. Also with the, the Brexit thing, I get it, but I also don't get it. Zuma started getting on Twitter. <laughs> just from being in Cape Town, the drought was obviously quite a serious one because it, it just affected the city as a whole. There were definitely low points for me in 2018. I think life was a constant flux between low and high points, but I think I have a definite understanding of duality and acceptance of it. So for me, the low points make you appreciate the high point. And often art comes from the low point. Career-wise, we were all thriving, but emotionally, we were all in shit. It was like that year where sort of like your soul was demanding attention. A lot of people passed away. Like a lot of people are battling with this mental illness. Everybody goes through things. They're just not showing it, you know? So I think like the lowest was like, just understanding like Java, Pro Kid, all these people had like mental you know, some conditions that didn't allow them to move as fast as they used to. So that was like, yeah, that was, that was tough. Man. One of the most dangerous things is we think women are equal, but we're not. Where's the women sound people? Oh, there aren't any. Where's the women light people? Oh, there aren't any. Where are the women venue owners? Oh, there aren't any. We're learning now, you know what I'm saying? Like, there's a new wave of things that are happening, you know? Especially when it comes to gender, like gender politics, you know? Where you're, the lowest low would have been how men are just trash. You know, people get arrested for, for beating their wives. You know, how can I say no for, if these things are like in front of us. So now we know there's a man and a woman, right? But now there's like other sort of like genders that are, that are coming through, which were not written in the Bible. And that's okay. Nothing explains bravery than that. Someone who comes out of the shell and then and become something else, you know what I mean? So we had to learn about those things. We are living in a very polarized environment, globally and locally right now. So a lot of the way the conversation is brought up is 
divisive in many ways and is not leading to sustainable actions or innovation. I think Casper going from trap to making quite a the cultural moment, low-key, because he knew that like that line, sort of like trying to sound American and stuff, is not it no more. Especially after Wakanda, I realized the importance of Abantu more so than the industry. Like the industry always follows what the people are doing anyways. So my main focus was just getting people to hear the music. Because the year started in September last year. Everything was happening throughout the year, but things started happening properly in the last four months of the year. That's when, you know, so whoever was in that pit came out strong. I'm an old street kid. I know how to sort of make it all work right now. Of course, I would like some millions. But you know, one day maybe. It just felt like every month or every week, I just saw like new, like really good work coming out, whether it was in like art or fashion or music. It's, it's cool because it keeps you on your toes and you, whatever you start like relaxing a bit, you know that you've got to like, you can't do it for too long because someone else is going to come and like um, take that spot. People are just making things happen, you know, with what they've got. Nobody's bored and nobody's stagnant. Nine moments. Wow. Best nine moments in 2018. Yeah, I think I'm gonna just look at my Instagram quickly. It was like my best nine moments of 2018. They really documented it in my Instagram for real, for real, for real, you know? Well, number one, I always enjoy making shoes, walking the streets of Joburg, thinking of new patterns, thinking of new ideas. That's amazing, I, I love doing that. Number two, I've always wanted to go to Senegal, and I did this. That was amazing. When I was in Dakar, Afropunk was doing an event there. I also DJed there. Number three, being involved with Tandiswa Mazwai when she launched a Mandela Woman Fest. I worked on Nakane's album. Another highlight was DJing more and more. I'm a Pussy Party alumni. Uh, the one would be going to Dubai for the Soul TXB. And the two would be making my first cast, you know, casting my first sculpture. That was like amazing. Uh, the third was like going to a wedding for the first time. I've never been to a wedding for the first time. Fourth, making the candle wax. And the fifth one would be when I drew myself for the first time. I've never done that before, you know. You know, this, introducing this to the world, something that I've done with Real Coffee, and I had to launch this. So like, pretty much, it's all based around the sculptures that I've been making and the art that I've been making, you know. Okay, I suppose like one off the bat would be moving into our new place, my wife and I. Second was getting a little furry addition to our family, a little puppy, which has been amazing. Third was, I guess, just another year filled with like really cool travel, even though it was a lot of like work oriented stuff. It's always really nice to get away and, and be inspired. Spending more time on, on the bicycle with my, my brother and my dad. I guess the culmination of like a 12 month project with Kirk. Um, which yeah, ended off with us having a big launch at the store and actually finally dropping the films in the collection. In the beginning of the year, we actually started off the year, got to work with Boiler Room and did a photographic essay on the youth and the burgeoning hip-hop culture, so essentially underground hip-hop culture. And we did Dala What You Must Part 2 with High Snobiety, which essentially centered around um, putting up portraits of kids in the hood. Then also collaborated with a good friend of mine called Little Sims and Osiris the God, she's a London rapper. Uh, we made a dope music video again. And then one of the biggest highlights of this year was um, getting onto Vogue. Yonela Makoba and myself, we made a series called Water. Uh, Afrovision dropping, that's one. Uh, two million streams, that's two. Uh, shooting questions, the video. That was a really cool, cool ass moment. Uh, Afropunk. UK tour, uh, feel good series, that gig was fire. Rockin' the Daisies on call. <laughs> Obi Kobi on call. Losing all my fake friends. That was, <laughs> that was also a moment that was really fire. Afro Punk is like kind of like being yourself. Being yourself. It was just like a lot of people that felt okay in their skin. I think the world definitely needs a space for like young people of colour to like do their own thing and have their own space. Afropunk is a symbol of so much more, you know. Punk, you feel 
you know, a more global conversation happening. You feel, in many ways, doors opening. You feel platforms connecting. There's no festival like it around the world. As much as people are like, oh, it's just another music festival. I'm like, nah, there's no festival where men can walk around in tutus. Women can walk around topless and there's queer acts from all over the world and there's such a wide variety of black culture and it's at Con Hill and we all feel safe and it's beautiful and it's on New Year. We, we're there now, you know, we're doing videos, we're doing content, we're creating our own content based on our own lives and our interests. You see the international eyes, you see the global eyes looking at South Africa. Again, they're not exactly sure what they're looking for, but they're definitely looking. It's very um, encouraging to meet other creatives from other places, right? And then so you get to create and make something that's beautiful. Then on the flip side, can easily become a token. You are the African guy, give us the African sound, and let us take the African sound and put it into our UK base or whatever. And, and let's tell you what Africa is. It's like, um, I'm an African dog, you can't teach me how to be African, you know? So that's the other side. The other side is, is I know more about them than they know about us. You know, creatives have long been taking Africa global. It's always been the case. Maybe people didn't know it was African because people always take from Africa without acknowledging the source, but we've long been inspiring the world. So I suppose right now we're trying to redo the damage of those taking things. Colonialism, slavery, we just need to shine the light on ourselves, work together, try make money from it, and also recognize that there's systems against us. It's not that we don't work hard or that we're not great. It's that it's hard to undo these things that have been done. To me, I don't only want to make it globally, I want the roots to be a part of this, making it, or whatever you want to define that as. So why I wanted to create any of this work in the first place, you know? Like really trying to disregard the clout and the hype and the, all that, trying to box it all out. But I think more importantly, it's just the idea that young people, specifically of color as well, can work together and we can build together. What I predict for 2019, I see us South African creatives exporting more ideas. I see us breaking boundaries. I see us connecting with more people. It's going to be more brands popping up, more um, artists popping up, more musicians. It seems like music is like the, the part where it's, it's happening the most. Cape Town hip hop is coming for the world. It's not even about South Africa at this point. Something has woken up in the underground in Cape Town and it's definitely coming. I feel like a lot of uh, big guys are out of ideas and out of juice, so it's like the best time for um, us to be doing like curated shows. Like it's, there's a lot of fertile soil because the guys before us like were doing good and then they started doing a lot of shit, and that shit has fertilized the soil. <laughs> that shit has fertilized the soil, and now we're here. Stay humble, show love and respect, be grateful. You know, kind of energy of abundance not needing anything from anyone, just keeping the intention simple, keep telling honest stories. You just have to work hard, be nice to people, be honest, be excellent. Yeah, keep connecting with people and keep learning. And just like, yo man, you can do it, you can do it. You know, we can do better here at home, but you can definitely